Hello and welcome back to the Essex Allotment Farm. It's absolutely glorious this morning. There's not a cloud in the sky. Hence the reason we've had our first frost of the year or proper frost of the year. Um, it's got to quite a lot of the plants. Um, most of them are winter hardy. I'll show you around and uh, we'll have a look at a few of them. And then we'll be talking about what I've been up to in the last two weeks. I didn't do a vlog last week. I had some technical issues, but we're all sorted now. We're back to normal and we'll have our weekly vlog. But look at that. It's absolutely stunning. So as I said, welcome back to the Essex Allotment Farm. Uh, if you haven't watched one of my videos so far, my name's Alex and this is my commercial market garden. Uh, as I said in the intro, I haven't done a vlog for two weeks, which is the first time I've missed a week since we had the farm. Uh, I had a couple of technical difficulties, but it's all sorted now and we can crack on with these weekly vlogs again. And I've just shown you what an absolutely stunning morning it is here on the farm. We've got our first hard frost. Um, the plants seem to have dealt with it fine, and uh, but it just looks so picturesque and it's just a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Um, first thing in the morning, you know, really sets you up for the day. So although I've got loads of hard graft ahead of me and I've been doing loads in the last two weeks, Coming here first thing in the morning and seeing the farm looking like it does, a uh, proper autumnal or winter's day, it just looks stunning. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Loads of people talk about how gardening and um, you know being outdoors really helps with their mental health and their mental state. And although by starting a commercial market garden, I've put loads of pressure into doing gardening by making it a job and a source of income. It is mornings like this that you remember, you know, how lucky we are and how great it is to be able to work outside and to be uh, in the sunshine in uh, towards the end of November. And it's just. It's really set me up. I don't know what's going on this morning. I don't usually start the vlogs like this, but it's just really set me up to crack on with the week and I just can't wait. So part of the reason um, there was no vlog last week is because when I sat down to look at what I had managed to uh, get and what footage I had managed to get, I'd hardly done anything. I'd hardly done anything and that was because the weather had been so bad. So I'll chuck a picture up now and show you sort of the entrance and the walkway into where my field starts. So it was pretty bad and uh, whilst I know that uh, working outdoors, I've worked outdoors now for a couple of years, um, you have to get used to bad weather and you have to use, get used to the cold and the wet, uh, you just have to dress appropriately. Uh, you can see there that this was an absolute extreme. So I hardly got anything done at all. Um, it's only been in the last few days that the ground started to become dry enough again um, to sort of do any work. And as I've explained before, um, and I hope that picture sort of indicates uh, just how wet the field and Essex has been over the last couple of months and that I have not been moaning on these vlogs for no reason. Uh, I've talked to you a little bit about some of the problems that presents um, walking around the beds and stuff is doing more damage to the paths and making things, the actual blocks themselves, muddy and unworkable. And um, access to the field has obviously been limited. So I showed you in the last vlog that my wood chips had to be dropped off right at the entrance to the field because the truck and tractors can't get across the field because it's so wet. So it does present a few problems, but like I said, over the last few days, it started to dry up and I've managed to get some jobs done. And the first thing that I've got done, which is really exciting, 
is the thousand strawberry plants that I ordered uh, two weeks ago and I told you about in last week's vlog have arrived and I've started to plant them into the ground. So let's go and have a look at this process. I'm out here on the perennial bed in block B and as you could see I am growing my strawberries through plastic or weed membrane this year which I've talked about in previous vlogs. Really really simple uh, way to get neat holes that won't fray, find a metal ring, this is like an egg ring I think you use for frying perfectly uh, circular eggs if you're into that. Um, I borrowed it off my mum and I've got a kitchen torch that I bought and it's as simple as putting that ring on the ground to give you a bit of a um, guidance and position and then burning through the weed membrane. Like I said, burning rather than cutting stops the weed membrane from fraying. If you cut this weed membrane, it will fray and deteriorate a lot quicker. Uh, this stuff should last for years, should get a couple of cycles of strawberries out of this weed membrane. So at least, you know, maybe six to eight years out of this weed membrane before I've got to reuse it and get rid of it responsibly. So I'm not too fussed about using it. Um, as plastic and yeah uh, the like I said burning is really really easy you can do it the other way where you heat up the ring um, itself and then just press that into the plastic but I found this way is easier when the uh, plastic has been walked on it's a little bit more difficult you need to try and get some air underneath the plastic as opposed to it being stuck to the heavy soil underneath so that caused a few problems and it is quite time consuming and obviously you're on ha your hands and knees quite a lot so uh, there might be better ways to do this. This is how I've started off um, doing it and it seems to be working pretty well. The tool that I was using in those videos has been an absolute back saver. Um, I just found this in my mum's garage. Uh, they've had it for years and it's like a bulb planter, but one, as you saw, you know, for a bit heavier duty, a bit, my soil's quite clay, so it's been absolutely brilliant. I should have perhaps taken some footage of it so you could see it working properly before it was covered in mud. But um, yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. So rather than having to crawl along with a traditional hand bulb planter and take some of the clay soil out to replace with, you know, soil conditioner or a better standard of compost, um, I've been able to do it standing up like you saw in the video with this. And honestly, it's been brilliant. You just stick it in, stand on it, um, and then use this little handle to push out the soil that it, it brings out and I've been doing that into a bucket and then straight into uh, the compost bin so yeah absolute lifesaver I've looked online and I can't see these anywhere like this the ones with the handles like this I can't see anywhere else so it's a bit rickety and you know a bit stiff to start off with but an absolute back saver you know I, it's meant that a third of this job i.e digging the holes um, I was able to do upright and not on my hands and knees which it was just fantastic. It was just, just brilliant and so much quicker than doing it by hand.
So I ordered a thousand Cambridge favourites and they came as bare root stock like this. Really, really reasonable from RW Warpole it's called. Um, I think you can only buy in uh, quantities of a thousand so it won't be good necessarily for allotmenteers but for anyone doing this commercially it might be quite a good place to have a look. They come as bare root stock like this. Lovely set of roots on them, quite nice plants. And all I do is separate them and put them in the trays just to make it really easy to plant. And then as you saw, it's really simple. Got the holes already cut, got the um, got the membrane already cut, the, the earth out of the holes, and I'm just popping one of these in. And rather than adding the horrible clay soil back to it, I am uh, filling it in with some soil conditioner from Natural uh, grower fertilizer so yeah um, a really simple process to plant and good quality strawberry plants I'm hoping for a really really good crop from these next year day one of planting I managed to get 360 of the strawberry plants in the ground uh, it's a lot more time consuming than I thought uh, which means I've probably got another at least a day and a half's worth of planting left to go just realized I've got a shadow right over my face which is good camera work but I'm uh, pretty pleased with how it's gone apart from it taking a little bit more time like I said cutting the holes and or burning the hole should I say and um, taking out the clay soil it took a lot longer than I thought the actual plant in itself is relatively simple so the plan is to get some volunteers for next weekend to help me do the planting and during the week I will do all the soil prep and weed membrane prep and then that means by next weekend I should have all a thousand in the ground which would be fantastic uh, to keep them sort of fresh until then, all I've done is put them in buckets of water um, and stored them in a place where they're not going to get frost. It's going to be it'll be cold, so in the shed it will just take the chill off. They won't get frosted in the shed, but they will stay nice and cool and they should last comfortably for a week in those buckets of water, um, waiting for me to plant them in the ground next weekend. And I've got two volunteers signed up already, which is fantastic news. It may well feel like it's the time of year where things start to slow down. However, you've just seen in the last shot that I've got 160 P plugs. Yeah, P plugs, easy for you to say. Um, with two P plants in each plug, it's getting even tougher, um, to go in the ground soon. They'll be ready. Again, they've been in an unheated shed, you know, in front of those windows, getting plenty of sunlight, but nice and cool. So it's really fantastic that they're growing really short and stocky like they look like really 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 healthy plants they're not leggy at all they're not reaching out for the light so they're obviously getting enough light even at this time of year and they're meteor variety so they're brilliant for this cooler weather um, and yeah they're growing really 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 well what I might have to do is do the same thing with broad beans because if you remember a few vlogs ago I planted two beds direct sown broad beans and the germination direct zone of those this time of year have been really hit and miss. Uh, I did show a clip earlier in the vlog of some of the broad beans. I'll just chuck that in again now to show you. But some of them are coming up really nicely. However, um, they're quite gappy. Not all of them have germinated, especially in the second bed, which is where I had the scarlet variety. They've hardly germinated at all. So what I'm gonna do, long story short, I'm waffling. Um, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the peas and I'm gonna start some off of both varieties in seed trays, 100, 150 of each, and then I'm gonna plug the gaps. Where, and where I've direct sowed them and they haven't germinated, I'll put some of the plugs in there. So that's a job for this week. They need to get started now so that they, 
get a bit of growth on before proper winter comes. As I said earlier in the vlog, because of the pure amount of rain we've had and the flooding in the entrance to the field, work has really slowed down. So this is block C, which I had started the beds down the bottom end there, but I just can't get the wood chip pile and the compost delivery up to this top end of the field with the weather as it is at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I've bought some huge silage sheets and I'm going to bring those over and uh, lay them on this block and where the next block is going to be so that it suppresses the weeds, keeps the weeds down, kills these little ones that have germinated inside the block and as and when the weather starts getting better I can peel that silage back and start building the beds. But for now with it not being so urgent, just got to have these done by next spring, uh, ready to plant in. I can just cover them with silage and um, yeah, take it from there. So I got that job done this week and this is how I did it. Oh my God, all I had to do was get it from the car over there up to the block C. Oh my God, that was heavy. job is now all done and a massive weight off my mind. I'm stood at the top of block B. Um, we've obviously pegged it down to try and protect it from the wind and move in in any heavy winds that we get between now and spring. Um, and then use some of these heavy sort of compost bags, soil improver bags to weigh down the edges. So yeah, that should be in place now. Doing, bringing loads of positivity to this area. Should attract the worms under there because they're safe from predators. Should suppress any weeds that have grown. And um, without disturbing the soil, we should have a weed free area to build the beds and the paths for block C and D uh, when it gets dry enough for me to be able to do it. Hopefully that'll be this side of Christmas. If not, it will be in the new year. That is it for the vlog this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and thought it was good, then give me the thumbs up, which helps my channel grow. And yeah, let me know what you're doing on your allotments or farms at this time of year. Thanks a lot, bye.